thank, thank, you, thank you, everyone. That, that's the first time we've gotten applause just for seating themselves properly, <laughs> which... Welcome. Would all of you but the graduates please be seated? <laughs> We'd like to begin by taking a picture of the Patrick Leahy Honors College Scholars. Family members, you will have an opportunity to take photos as well, but please wait until the university photographer in the balcony is finished before taking your own pictures. Otherwise, the pictures will be spoiled because of too many flashes going off at the same time. So, would the graduates please turn to face the balcony? Now families can, can take their photos if they wish. Thank, thank you, students. You may be seated now. While my attention is towards the balcony, I'd like to recognize and thank Yun Hee Park, university organist and affiliate artist who has been playing for us during the processional. Thank you, Yun Hee. Welcome once again to all of you who have come here to celebrate the accomplishments of the graduating class of the University of Vermont Patrick Leahy Honors College. Thank you for coming to this ceremony, which will mark and commemorate the achievements of our students and confer upon them the title of Patrick Leahy Honors College Scholar. I am David Jenneman, Dean of the Honors College, and I have had the great pleasure and privilege of working with these students for a long time and I know how much they have relied on the help of so many of you, teachers, mentors, family members, and friends, to allow them to reach the point where they arrive today. Thank you all for your support of these remarkable students. Let me mention the others who are with me on the platform, beginning with the person farthest to my left, Provost Patricia Prelock. Next to her, our president, Suresh Garamella, who will be presenting our opening address shortly. Next, Professor Randall Harp, Department of Philosophy, our recognition speaker. Next to him, Professor Eliana Castro, Professor of Secondary Education and Curriculum and Instruction. Finally, next to her and carrying the Patrick Leahy Honors College Mace, Associate Dean Ian Grimmer, our procession marshal. I should say a little something about our college mace. It's the Buxton Dewey Mace, which was given to commemorate the 150th anniversary of the birth of John Dewey, UVM class of 1879, by J. Brooks, Brooks Buxton, class of 1956. John Dewey's legacy inspires the Honors College's ideals of promoting inquiry, service, and leadership. Mr. Buxton was a patron of the arts and a public servant who, in 2018, was named an Honorary Doctor of Humane Letters by UVM. I'd also like to recognize our student speaker and our banner bearers for today's ceremony. Elizabeth Roadcap is our student speaker. Elizabeth, could you please stand? <laughs> Eli Smith and Sierra Sabek, could you also please stand? They are today's They are today's banner bearers. Finally, would our banner bearer for tomorrow's university commencement ceremony, Adam Zukowski, please stand. Our banner bearers, you can sit. <laughs> our banner bearers are outstanding student leaders from an outstanding class, chosen for their academic accomplishments and contributions to the Patrick Leahy Honors College community. They represent the very fine work that all Honors College scholars have done over the past four years. Thank you, Eli, Sierra, and Adam for representing your very accomplished classmates as banner bearers. One of the things that I know the students have appreciated is the supportive community of the Honors College. That couldn't be a reality without our wonderful staff. Assisting today are Genevieve Anthony, Simone Blaze, Scott Clark, Martha Lance, 
Melissa Parr, Ginny DeFrancis, Dana Mitchell, Claire Kohler, and Ann Kroll Lerner. Genevieve, Simone, Scott, Martha, Melissa, Ginny, Dana, Claire, and Ann, please make yourselves known. All the students recognize and appreciate how helpful and instrumental you've been to their Honors College experience. Thank you. I also want to recognize other members of the UVM community that have joined us on this auspicious occasion. Dean Leslie Parisi, Linda Shadler, Katie Shepard, Alan Strong, Chief Human Resources Officer Chris Lehman, and a number of our Board of Trustees members, some of whom I can see from where I stand, including Shap Smith and former Honors College student Lucy Rogers. Thank you all for being here today. And of course, of course our esteemed faculty members. They are sitting near the front of the chapel to my left. I know that we all, and particularly the students, want to acknowledge the teaching, mentoring, and counsel of the faculty members who have supported and challenged them throughout their four years here. Thank you, faculty. <laughs> Finally, I am delighted to acknowledge Senator Patrick J. Leahy and Marcel Leahy. A year ago this week, we were delighted to officially rename our college in recognition of the Senator's support of the university and his distinguished career of service to our state and the nation. We are deeply grateful for the Senator and Marcel's continuing support of the Patrick Leahy Honors College and are proud to be the steward of their living legacy of public service, humanitarianism, and civic engagement. Thank you, Senator Marcel. As some of you know, one of my intellectual heroes is the philosopher Theodore Adorno, who was a German Jewish scholar who fled to the United States during World War II and who spent his life trying to come to grips with the legacy of fascism and authoritarianism he had witnessed in Europe. Adorno once wrote that telling a story means having something special to say but that is precisely what is prevented by the administered world, by standardization, and by eternal sameness. Most years, the Patrick Leahy Honors College recognition ceremony is an opportunity to reflect on a standard story, how the class has grown and changed in the years since you decided to come to UVM. I get to remember meeting students at their, and their families at admitted student visits, greeting them at move-in, gathering at our welcome events, and getting to know you in the first year seminars or serving you mac and cheese in the kitchen of U Heights North. Then I get to marvel at your accomplishments, the awards you've won, and your inspiring thesis research. There's a comfortable, if predictable, regularity to the cycle of an honors college career. Class of 2024, you were different. For many of you, it's likely that our first encounter was not at an admitted student visit, but via a computer screen. You got to know the Honors College through virtual admissions events, like YouTube videos and dessert with the Dean. I think it's fair to say that more of this class has seen my living room than any preceding class of Honors College students. When you arrived on campus, you had to maintain social distancing so we couldn't gather for full class events. In seminars, we were masked. It took a long time to get to know your faces and your names, and given the restrictions on social interactions, it also took you a longer time to get to know one another. Remember how we were supposed to keep a cow's length apart when we were with one another? Without the usual ways to connect, it required a leap of faith for you to decide to join our community. It also took courage and ingenuity for you to learn new ways of being a student, of sustaining friendships, of participating in campus activities, of Zooming and Teamsing and getting close while you were distancing. The fact that you are here today is a testament to your adaptability, your strength, and your persistence. Your story did not have the comfortable predictability of most classes. Everything was changing. Everything was new. Even the name of the college changed while you were here. And yet, here you are, as successful, as accomplished, as bonded 
as any class in PLHC history. So when you tell your story, class of 2024, please tell it with the pride of knowing that you have told a new story. And know too that whatever disruptions and unforeseen alterations from the ever same you encounter ahead, you have the courage and the ingenuity to see those new stories through to their successful conclusions too. As you head off into your next adventures, just be sure to let us know how those stories are going. Come back and visit us. Share your news, because we know how extraordinary your stories will be. It is now a great pleasure for me to introduce our first speaker, President Suresh Garamella, the 27th President of the University of Vermont. We have been very fortunate to have President Garamella lead our university. He joined us in 2019 from Purdue University, where he was the Goodson Distinguished Professor of Mechanical Engineering and Executive Vice President for Research and Partnerships. He is the co-author of over 600 refereed publications and holds numerous patents. I used to list the number, but he always would tell me that he invented a few new things since the last time I, I checked. So, he has applied his expertise to national and international policy issues, having served as a Jefferson Science Fellow at the U.S. Department of State and as a Senior Fellow for Energy and Climate Partnerships of the Americas. Since 2022, I personally have had the great pleasure of being his partner in the annual presidential leadership conversations and have seen firsthand his abiding commitment to cultivating a climate of civil discourse across differences. And I know we are both quite proud to see some of our presidential leadership fellows cross the stage today. I'm so grateful to President Garamella for all he has done for UVM throughout the last five years, particularly for his generous and unwavering support for the Patrick Leahy Honors College. President Garamella will present the opening address. Please join me in welcoming President Garamella. Thank you, David. And good afternoon. Welcome to all of you. Most of all, the parents and the loved ones that have supported our students, Senator and Marcel Leahy, my colleagues in administration, trustees, and certainly all the honorees today. Just want to remind you, you're not getting your degrees today. You need to show up tomorrow morning to get those. So we spend a lot of time at a university thinking about theories, reading about other people's ideas and philosophies, ideas from across space and time and place. But what may be the most important and exciting part of a university education is to think independently and nurture your own, your own ideas. So today, I'll do something unusual. I'll read you a children's book. All of it. You'll soon see why. That's the book. The title is, What Do You Do With an Idea? Practice for when I have to read to my grandchildren. One day, I had an idea. Where did it come from? Why is it here? I wondered. What do you do with an idea? At first, I didn't think much of it. It seemed kind of strange and fragile. I didn't know what to do with it, so I just walked away from it. I acted like it didn't belong to me, but it followed me. I worried about what others would think. What would people say about my idea? I kept it to myself. I had it. I hid it away and didn't talk about it. I tried to act like everything was the same as it was before my idea showed up. The illustrations are beautiful here, but you don't get to see those. But there was something magical about my idea. I had to admit, I felt better and happier when it was around. It wanted food. It wanted to play. Actually, it wanted a lot of attention. It grew bigger, and we became friends. I showed it to other people, even though I was afraid of what they would say. 
I was afraid that if people saw it, they would laugh at it. I was afraid they would think it was silly. And many of them did. They said it was no good. They said it was too weird. People say that about me all the time. They said it was a waste of time and that it would never become anything. And at first, I believed them. I actually thought about giving up on my idea. I almost listened to them. But then I realized, what do they really know? This is my idea, I thought. No one knows it like I do. And it's OK if it's different and weird and maybe a little crazy. I decided to protect it, to care for it. I fed it good food. I worked with it. I played with it. But most of all, I gave it my attention. My idea grew and grew, and so did my love for it. I built it a new house, one with an open roof, where it could look up at the stars, a place where it could be safe to dream. I liked being with my idea. It made me feel more alive, like I could do anything. It encouraged me to think big and then to think bigger. It shared its secrets with me. It showed me how to walk on my hands because it said it is good to have the ability to see things differently. I couldn't imagine my life without it. Then one day, something amazing happened. My idea changed right before my very eyes. It spread its wings, took flight, and burst into the sky. I don't know how to describe it, but it went from being here to being everywhere. It wasn't just a part of me anymore. It was now a part of everything. And then I realized what you do with an idea, you change the world. So that's the book. I hope you get a copy. And it's by Kobe Yamada, illustrated by May Bisum. And so what do you do with an idea? You change the world. I hope you see why I had to read you that book. The Honors College is so much more than just the sum of its parts. It is a unique educational community rooted in a common drive to explore and achieve. To create thinkers who knew how to have ideas and what to do with them. And as I look out at you, I know you're a group who's as ready as any class before you to do something with your ideas. Your four years at UVM were marked by the challenges of the pandemic, which you transcended with great consideration for yourselves, for each other, and for our community as a whole. What distinguishes you as students, as people, is your ability to maintain focus and hold high standards for yourselves, no matter the circumstances. These qualities were profoundly evident during your time here at UVM. You spent four years cultivating ideas and honing your skills in research and discovery, and now it is time to take them out into the world and put them to their greatest use. The road to success has been well trodden by those who preceded you in the Leahy Honors College. Now it's your turn. Congratulations. Thank you, President Garamella. It's now a great pleasure for me to introduce Elizabeth Roadcap, our student speaker. Elizabeth came to us from Milford, New Hampshire, and majored in molecular genetics and minored in health and society. Elizabeth has worked in the Patrick Leahy Honors College as a peer mentor and a student ambassador for three years. Several years of research in Dr. Barlow's laboratory led to Elizabeth's honors thesis and her College of Agriculture and Life Science Distinguished Undergraduate Research Project. In addition to Elizabeth's involvement on campus, she's been a pharmacy technician throughout college. Elizabeth is the recipient of the 2023 Alexander McMahon Kendi Academic Merit Award and the 2024 Lawrence K. Forsey Outstanding Senior Award 
in the College of Agriculture and Life Sciences. In the fall, we will cheer Elizabeth on as she uh, pursues a Master of Health Administration as a Sloan Leadership Fellow at Cornell University. Please join me in welcoming Elizabeth Roadcap to the podium. Good afternoon, everyone. Families, friends, faculty, thank you so much for your unwavering guidance and support for the graduates here today. And Patrick Leahy Honors College, Class of 2024, congratulations. It's easy to say the common phrase, we did it, but it is rather a small word to encompass everything we've accomplished over the last four years, so I'll elaborate. We've taken classes, written papers, endured labs, created artwork, evaluated readings, joined clubs, led teams, traveled, laughed, worked, presented, dreamed, designed, developed, defended, and so much more. So congratulations on balancing and navigating all of these pieces. I'm so grateful to share what may be some of our first true in-person graduation ceremonies with you all today. While I was working at an admitted students panel a couple of weeks ago, a parent asked what my biggest misconception of the Patrick Leahy Honors College had been. This was a challenging question to respond to, but I realized that my biggest misconception was that PLHC would be a purely academic experience. I had envisioned the academic rigor and challenging coursework, but not the community that awaited me. From nights on the green roof to events like the kickball tournament, I've loved spending time with you all. The Honors College has been a community where I could find not only other passionate learners and amazing friends, but also where I could find myself. As your peer, I don't feel that I'm in possession of more wisdom than the rest of you. So instead of advice, I can share with you my reflections as my experience here has concluded. So many times I've heard graduation, the end of college, referred to as the closing of a chapter and the beginning of a new one. As a girl, I was enamored with stories and was constantly reading and writing, enthralled by the power words hold to convey meaning and to move people. So references to life as part of a story, like our chapter in the Honors College and at the University of Vermont, are appealing to me. Throughout my time here, I've learned very clearly that we have limited control over the plot of our stories. None of us expected high school to end in a pandemic or for the place we saw the most people our first year to be the COVID testing line. However, forging relationships in such difficult times only made them that much stronger, the desire to be connected to each other that much greater. And even in the face of the unknown, we do have control over our character. We've taken care of each other and supported each other, from bringing each other masks when we accidentally left them in our rooms our first year, all the way to attending each other's thesis defenses this spring. My education was truly enriched by sharing a classroom with all of you, discussing topics we never would have explored if we hadn't come together through the Honors College. Between learning about honeybees in different cultures and the capacity for human rights and different interpretations of Islam, among other classes, I've seen that we are each the narrators of our own stories. Our experiences, upbringing, and education all influence our perceptions of life. Recognizing this, and learning how others may view their own lives or create their own versions of shared experiences is invaluable. I traveled to Belize over spring break with a women's health and spirituality travel study course and encountered influential Mayan and Garifuna cultural leaders with spiritual explanations of disease and traditional treatment methods. As a molecular genetics student and a pharmacy technician, their, their knowledge often conflicted with my own, but I was prepared to engage with and consider their ideas rather than resisting or discrediting them. In our seminars, we've been taught to recognize our own beliefs as one interpretation of the narrative. Regardless of if your chapter here is ending at a cliffhanger with the next page unknown, or if the genre is switching entirely as you pursue something new, or if your next step was predictable from the beginning, we all are fortunate to share an education which valued both depth and interdisciplinarity. Our society seems to both love and fear differences. We're so quick to label, then judge and make assumptions that dictate our actions based on these. The world clearly doesn't contain enough people with a willingness to listen. 
Because of each of our unique paths through the Honors College, we have developed the skills to go a step beyond listening, to understand one another, and to decenter our own experiences. If we act not individually as the hub of a wheel, but rather each as a spoke that approaches it at slightly different angles, we'll make something supportive and productive, which can gain momentum on challenging issues. We've proven that we can think critically throughout our studies. We've shown we can believe in ourselves, in our projects, and devote ourselves to making them reality. We've dreamed of what could come next, how we could use our passions and skills in the next phase of our lives. And now we must dare. Dare to venture out of our comfort zones. Dare to envision new possibilities. Dare to combine knowledge from different fields that aren't usually combined. Dare to not only be ourselves, but the version of ourselves that we aspire to be. Because as John F. Kennedy once said, those who dare to fail miserably can achieve greatly. I'm so proud of the accomplishments that we've made over the past four years, and I'm confident that the pinnacles of our stories are yet to come. I'm so grateful that we shared a setting here at the Patrick Leahy Honors College, and I look forward to seeing what we accomplish as our stories continue to unfold. Thank you again, and congratulations. <laughs> Thank you, Elizabeth. As the Patrick Leahy Honors College Processional Marshal, I now have the pleasure of presiding over the presentation of medallions. Students will be receiving medallions from Dean Jenneman, while President Garamella and Provost Prelock are congratulating the Patrick Leahy Honors College scholars. Dr. Prelock was named University Provost after serving as Dean of the College of Nursing and Health Sciences for 10 years, as Department Chair in the College of Arts and Sciences for eight years, and as a professor of communication sciences and disorders. In addition to all of these responsibilities, she continues to mentor Honors College students through their own thesis process, and she's been an outstanding supporter of the Patrick Leahy Honors College. For this part of the ceremony, I will be asking students to come up to receive medallions, and faculty marshal Professor Castro will recite student names. In addition, she'll be mentioning whether students are graduating Phi Beta Kappa or Latin Honors. There are many other awards and honors that these students have earned, and you will find these listed in the online commencement program. Now I will guide the students onto the stage, and we ask that you hold your applause until the very end. Joseph Hambright Alexander, College of Arts and Sciences, Cum Laude. Leola Francisca Amblo, College of Arts and Sciences. Elizabeth May Amelot, College of Agriculture and Life Sciences. Josie Renee Beauregard, College of Agriculture and Life Sciences. Nicholas H. Bender, College of Arts and Sciences. Naomi Helen Bringer, College of Nursing and Health Sciences. Samantha Grace Yorklin. College of Arts and Sciences, Cum Laude, Phi Beta Kappa. Keelan Emily Boisver, College of Arts and Sciences, Cum Laude. Mortarboard. Jasmine Bombard, College of Education and Social Services. Sierra Sebek, College of Arts and Sciences, Cum Laude, Phi Beta Kappa, Mortar Board. Elizabeth Ellen Roadcap, College of Agriculture and Life Sciences, Summa Cum Laude. Elijah B. Smith, 
College of Engineering and Mathematical Sciences, cum laude. Kelsey M. Brown, College of Arts and Sciences, cum laude, Phi Beta Kappa. Claire Eleanor Bushy, College of Arts and Sciences. Gian Cercina, College of Engineering and Mathematical Sciences. Lisbeth Cintron, Grossman School of Business, cum laude. Hannah Leigh Clark, College of Arts and Sciences, summa cum laude. Jade Cleary, College of Arts and Sciences, Phi Beta Kappa. Kendall Naomi Coldren, College of Nursing and Health Sciences, Phi Beta Kappa, cum laude. Jenny Rose Collins, College of Education and Social Services. William Isaac Conyers, Rubenstein School of Environment and National Resor Natural Resources. Ava Elizabeth Cody, College of Agriculture and Life Sciences. Alexa M. Dargy, College of Nursing and Health Sciences, summa cum laude. Ryan T. Davin, Davin, College of Arts and Sciences, summa cum laude, Phi Beta Kappa. Pierce Michael Quinn DeBoer, Grossman School of Business, cum laude. Amon Thomas Defner, College of Arts and Sciences, cum laude, Phi Beta Kappa. Kathleen Sarah Delaney, College of Arts and Sciences, Magna Cum Laude, Phi Beta Kappa. Alexis Jacqueline Detrick, Rubenstein School of Environment and Natural Resources, Magna Cum Laude. Advik Mandar de Wulkar, College of Engineering and Mathematical Sciences. Isabella Luda de Dio, College of Agriculture and Life Sciences, Cum Laude. Marceline Dockham, College of Arts and Sciences. Antranig S. Douglas, College of Arts and Sciences, Magna Cum Laude, Phi Beta Kappa. Lily Dewar, College of Arts and Sciences. <laughs> Nayantara Dotta, College of Arts and Sciences, Phi Beta Kappa. Emily Abigail Erdl, College of Arts and Sciences and College of Engineering and Mathematical Sciences. Seraphine Fetcher, College of Arts and Sciences, cum laude. Freya Huckleberry Feeney, College of Engineering and Mathematical Sciences. Sam Furtick, College of Arts and Sciences. Thomas B. Field, College of Engineering and Mathematical Sciences. Jenna Fracasso, College of Engineering and Mathematical Sciences. Sarah Nicole Friedman, College of Arts and Sciences, cum laude. Julia Elise Gamash, College of Arts and Sciences. Olivia Katerina Garvin, College of Agriculture and Life Sciences. Max Shabra Gerlach, College of Arts and Sciences, Magna Cum Laude, Phi Beta Kappa. Angelica Marie Bustamante Golbin, College of Agriculture and Life Sciences. Justine Goldblatt, Summa Cum Laude, Phi Beta Kappa. Madeleine Gramling, Magna Cum Laude, Phi Beta Kappa. Morgan Renee Gregory, College of Arts and Sciences, Cum Laude. Catherine Zeta Hassan, College of Arts and Sciences. Blythe Shabon Hattenbach, College of Engineering and Mathematical Sciences, Cum Laude. Catherine Avery Hood, College of Agriculture and Life Sciences, Magna Cum Laude, Phi Beta Kappa. Allison Ray Hoy, 
College of Arts and Sciences, Phi Beta Kappa. Catherine Weiss Hunter, College of Engineering and Mathematical Sciences. Eva Jessup, College of Arts and Sciences, Magna Cum Laude. Marina Zhao, College of Agriculture and Life Sciences. Noah Sarkis Johnson, College of Engineering and Mathematical Sciences. <laughs> Laurel Eliza King, College of Arts and Sciences. Abigail Mackenzie Noble, College of Engineering and Mathematical Sciences, summa cum laude. Abigail Eden Kapelowitz, College of Arts and Sciences. Noah Casimir Crason, College of Arts and Sciences. Adina R. Kraus, College of Arts and Sciences, Phi Beta Kappa. Isabel Marie Lapierre, College of Arts and Sciences, Phi Beta Kappa. Megan Elizabeth Levine, College of Arts and Sciences, Cum Laude. Evan Leaf, College of Arts and Sciences. Natalie Jill Lloyd, College of Nursing and Health Sciences, Cum Laude. Henry August Lundy, Rubenstein School of Environment and Natural Resources. Brooke Lundegren, College of Engineering and Mathematical Sciences. Sydney Madera, College of Agriculture and Life Sciences. Sydney McFarland, College of Arts and Sciences, Cum Laude Phi Beta Kappa. Soham Mehta, Rubenstein School of Environment and Natural Resources, cum laude. John Piermont Morgan V, College of Engineering and Mathematical Sciences. Margaret Alana Moses, College of Arts and Sciences. Luca Spickler Mossman, College of Engineering and Mathematical Sciences. Evan William Norcross, College of Engineering and Mathematical Sciences. Sophie Rare O'Neill, College of Nursing and Health Sciences. Sabrina Marie Ost, College of Agriculture and Life Sciences, cum laude. Owen Vincent Palsic, College of Arts and Sciences, cum laude, Phi Beta Kappa. Samantha Shade Paquette, College of Agriculture and Life Sciences and College of Education and Social Services, cum laude. Ella B. Paulson, College of Arts and Sciences and Rubenstein School of Environment and Natural Resources, cum laude, Phi Beta Kappa. Ethan Pezzini, College of Agriculture and Life Sciences, cum laude. Margaret Pierce, College of Arts and Sciences and College of Education and Social Services, cum laude. Ian Andrew Pless, College of Arts and Sciences, cum laude. Antonio Luis Pugliesi, College of Arts and Sciences, summa cum laude, Phi Beta Kappa. Rowan Leland Rees, College of Engineering and Mathematical Sciences. Emma Catherine Regan, College of Arts and Sciences, magna cum laude. Haley Diana Chasson Rosenfield, College of Agriculture and Life Sciences, Mortar Board. Ethan Rubin, College of Engineering and Mathematical Sciences. Madeline S. Saffer, College of Arts and Sciences, Phi Beta Kappa. Anya Bella Letitia Sampson, College of Engineering and Mathematical Sciences, summa cum laude. Sarah E. Saruf, College of Education and Social Services. Brandon Samuel Schoenfeld, College of Arts and Sciences, summa cum laude, magna cum laude, excuse me. Elizabeth Jane Scrimgeour, College of Arts and Sciences. Tin Aragorn Skorik, College of Arts and Sciences. Hudson Walter Smith, College of Engineering and Mathematical Sciences. Keisha Jada Smith, College of Nursing and Health Sciences. Sophia Yud Sampalia, College of Nursing and Health Sciences. Alexander Earl Stoot, College of Engineering and Mathematical Sciences. Katrina Subramanian, 
College of Arts and Sciences, College of Nursing and Health Sciences, cum laude, Phi Beta Kappa. Abigail Vance Tainter Gilbert, College of Engineering and Mathematical Sciences. Wyatt Emerson Taylor, College of Arts and Sciences, cum laude. Samuel Bartlett Thompson, Grossman School of Business, cum laude. Maya Thompson, College of Arts and Sciences, cum laude. Nicole S. Tier, College of Engineering and Mathematical Sciences. Sarah Van Horn, College of Arts and Sciences. Margaret Vesey, Vesey, College of Arts and Sciences, magna cum laude. Daniel J. Wallach, College of Arts and Sciences. Hannah Elizabeth Warren, College of Arts and Sciences. Sophie Ella Worth, College of Arts and Sciences, cum laude. Joseph Douglas Webb, College of Arts and Sciences. Wednesday Marie Toe Wendling, College of Agriculture and Life Sciences. Emma Wetzel, Rubenstein School of Environment and Natural Resources. Sydney Grace White, College of Arts and Sciences, College of Engineering and Mathematical Sciences, summa cum laude, Phi Beta Kappa, Mortar Board. Jasper Williams, College of Arts and Sciences and Grossman School of Business, cum laude. Sophie Kennedy Wolf, College of Arts and Sciences, cum laude. Elizabeth Gilbert Zen, College of Engineering and Mathematical Sciences. Caitlin A. Zoller, College of Arts and Sciences, cum laude, Phi Beta Kappa. Adam B. Zukowski, College of Engineering and Mathematical Sciences, cum laude, Mortar Board. Let's have another round of applause for the Patrick Leahy Honors College Scholars. It's now my privilege to ask Professor Randall Harp to present the recognition address. Randall Harp teaches in the philosophy department and he is a core member of the Vermont Complex Systems Center. His research interests center around work in the philosophy of the behavioral and social sciences, including topics in free will, collective action, social scientific explanation, rational choice, and moral psychology. In social metaphysics, including topics in social complexity and social construction, and in data and technology ethics, including topics in consent, in big data, and in artificial agency and artificial intelligence. A widely cited expert on the ethics of artificial intelligence, Randall is a copay on a $20 million National Science Foundation EPSCOR grant. The grant, Harnessing the Data Revolution for Vermont, the Science of Online Corpora, Knowledge, and Stories, SOX, is a groundbreaking data science effort to better understand and harness the power of stories. SOX considers how stories function as an essential part of how people comprehend, explain, predict, and seek to navigate the world. This project joins computer science and complex systems to digital humanities by developing a powerful approach to quantifying both individual stories and ecologies of stories through massive data collection, natural language processing, and large language models. The Patrick Leahy Honors College is also incredibly fortunate to have Randall as one of our superstar first-year faculty members teaching popular contemporary challenge courses on dystopian technology and free will, agency, and autonomy. These courses embody the interdisciplinary approach to research and teaching championed by the Patrick Leahy Honors College. Please welcome Professor Randall Harp.
All right. Good afternoon to all of the Patrick Leahy Honors College Scholars and to the friends and family and parents and just all-round boosters of our graduates. It is an honor and a pleasure to speak with you today. Uh, let me start with a message to the family and the boosters, and it's a simple one. I am fans of you all. You've done great work. And if we could, could we just give an applause, a round of applause for our family and friends and boosters for one moment? Okay, that's you guys' speech. Now let me turn for a moment to the Honors College scholars for a moment. Think back for one minute about your time here in the Patrick Leahy Honors College. Well, think three seconds. I only have 10 minutes here, right? Think about the friends you made. Think about your luxurious housing in University Heights. Think about your classes. Think about the first year seminars or your second year seminars. Think about your professor for that seminar. Wasn't that person nice? That person is proud of you. Think about the first assignment you turned in for an honor seminar, or think about the first exam you took. Imagine for a moment that you had to do that assignment right now. Imagine that you would not be allowed to graduate unless you absolutely aced that exam or that assignment. No, you don't get any time to reread the material or refresh your knowledge. Now, I don't know about that nice professor you had in that class, the one who was so very proud of you, but I can speak for myself. I don't care how you would do. I have taught three different seminars for PLHC over the years, a course on free will, a course on dystopian technology, and a course on pandemics. All of those courses were taught through my methodolog methodological lens as a philosopher. And since you are all now graduating, I can finally tell you guys a secret. I have no content to give you. There is no thing, there is no fact, there is no nugget of information that I have to offer that you should be expected to remember when you come back and visit campus one month from now, or one year from now, or 10 years from now, or 20, I do not want you to remember the specific facts we talked about in class. Maybe I gave an assignment that asked you to explain exactly how Dirk Paraboom's four-case argument purports to show that compatibilist theories of free will are not viable. Great. I want you to be able to do that during class. I don't want you to be able to do that 10 years from now. In fact, I will be a little bit disturbed if you can. <laughs> and that same is true for most of the facts that I might have tried to give you. And it's probably true for most of the facts that you would have gotten regardless of the seminar that you took. So what are we doing here? What was it all for? Or to put it another way, what do I want you to know or be able to do when I see you 20 years from now? The Honors College itself has views about what we're doing. Right? On the PLHC website, we are told that the Patrick Leahy Honors College is, quote, a dynamic college that embeds the liberal arts in a culture of research and scholarly inquiry, serving all undergraduate students at UVM who seek opportunities to excel in scholarship, leadership, and civic engagement, unquote that the goal is, quote, a vibrant community rooted in inclusive values where students are empowered through experiential learning and grow into courageous thinkers and compassionate leaders, unquote. And the website goes on to list what we value. One, inquiry driven by curiosity, intellectual risk-taking, and engagement with the problems of our time. Two, intellectual growth and the creation of knowledge. Three, a diverse and inclusive community experience grounded in empathy that combines academic exploration with well-being and belonging. Four, independent and critical thinking within a culture of integrity, accountability, and courageous leadership. And five, 
compassionate service to our community and to our world. And so I can certainly hope when you visit me 20 years from now that you have continued to grow into courageous thinkers and compassionate leaders, ones who are driven by curiosity, ones who are grounded in empathy and who are engaged with the problems of our time. I hope that you are serving our community and our world with compassion. But if I hold myself to just that standard, then I will have failed you. I neither directly taught nor tested you on your empathy or your curiosity or your compassion or even on your engagement with the problems of our time. I mean, maybe the pandemic scores. I hope I did not fail you. So let me say what I do want you to be able to do 20 years from now that actually came from my class, or, and I will try to not be offended, from whatever class you had. We live in a world that we have built together. Those building blocks are our concepts and our thoughts and our theories and our understanding of the world. And most of the time, we can just live in that world and not notice that some blocks don't quite fit together or that we have different goals and purposes for our shared pieces of conceptual furniture, right? Or maybe that one person is storing their conceptual clothes where another person is putting the conceptual forks. Look, I mean, it's not a great metaphor, right? But when we take the world for granted, when we are just living in the world, then we can navigate the world to accomplish our goals. And that's perfectly fine. That's what we do when we learn facts and specific theories and apply them in the appropriate domain, whether that be medicine or chemistry or engineering or computer science or psychology. We have knowledge and we use that knowledge to do things. But at other times, we want to step back and ask ourselves, why these concepts? Why this knowledge? Do all these concepts that I care about actually fit together? Can a person be held blameworthy or praiseworthy for things that are out of their control? And if not, does modern neuroscience suggest that everything is out of our control? Or if technology is a tool to help satisfy our current goals and desires, and good technology satisfies those current goals and desires better, how are we to evaluate technology that changes our goals and desires and who we are? Sometimes these questions require us to pause, to step outside of our current conceptual framework in order to ensure that all of the things that we value are actually compatible with one another. And doing that takes some work, and it takes some practice. We have to do it a bunch of times with things that maybe don't matter that much in order to be able to do it with the things that really do matter. I mean, I think that the metaphysics of social reality really does matter, but you might not, and that's precisely the point. These are your tools to be used on your projects and the things that you find valuable. Now, I want to emphasize this for a moment. Sometimes people say to me, what good is philosophy? You've been asking the same questions for 2,500 years, and you clearly have no answers yet, so maybe it's time to do something else. And, you know, ouch. But, the response I give is that philosophy is about ensuring that all the concepts that we use to navigate the world, all the beliefs and values and knowledge that we have actually fit together. Whenever we get new beliefs or new values or new knowledge, then we have to start philosophizing all over again. We're not done with philosophy because the world today looks very different than the world 2,500 years ago or 1,000 years ago, or 100 years ago. And the world will look very different 20 years from now than it does right now. And I say this as though it's unique to philosophy, but it's actually a feature of the liberal arts. What we have been training you to do is to make sure that the world is coherent 
including all of the values and beliefs and knowledge that we think are true. And so these are your tools to be used on your projects, which also means that it is now time for you to mostly ignore me and ignore the other folks in the Honors College who want to tell you what the problems of our time are that you should engage with, or what it means to be grounded in empathy, or what compassionate service to your community and the world means. You will live in a different world with different concepts and different beliefs and values. The world that you are making coherent is not the world that you have inherited from us. Now, I have my opinions about what you should do to make the world coherent, and I think I'm right. <laughs> I think you should listen to me. But you are soon to be graduates of the Patrick Leahy Honors College of the University of Vermont, and you are an equal participant in this exercise and you are more authoritative about the world that you are creating than I will ever be. Our graduating you means that you get to ignore us completely, if you so choose. Now, I don't want to minimize the difficulty. Coming to an agreement about shared concepts and values is hard. It's hard if you're just trying to do it for yourself, based on your own concepts but it is infinitely harder when you are trying to do it with others. But if we have not failed you, if I have not failed you, then these are the tools that you will have acquired during your time here. So that is what I hope for you all, that you find the projects and the causes and the issues that matter, grounded in empathy and in your desire to engage with the problems of our time, and that you identify the concepts and theoretical structures that shape our collective experience, and that you engage with these structures in an intellectually rigorous way so as to promote not only personal development, but also community well-being and service to the world we live in. You can do this. You have been practicing and training to do so every day of your Honors College career. So congratulations once again to you, the Patrick Leahy Honors College graduating class of 2024, and to your family and friends and loved ones, those who are here and those who could not be. I and all of my fellow faculty members can't wait for you to come back and tell us what you have done and accomplished and you really don't have to wait 20 years to do so. Thank you very much. Thank you, Professor Harp, for those wonderful remarks. And let me thank you once again for all that you have done for the university and for the Patrick Leahy Honors College and our students. As we come to the close of this ceremony, let me ask, as the platform party, faculty, and the students recess out of the chapel, will the audience please remain seated? Second, I want to invite you to a reception held immediately after this ceremony in the Grand Maple Ballroom of the Davis Center, fourth floor where there will be food, refreshments, and a chance to take a lot more pictures. There is also a gift for each student to commemorate the day. There is a shuttle running from just outside the chapel to the Jeffers lot near the Davis Center. I hope to see you all at the reception shortly, and I want to thank the members of the platform party for their moving and memorable words. And thank you all for coming today. Now, let us mark the close of the ceremony with one more round of applause for the Patrick Leahy Honors College Scholars of 2024.